Welcome to Anarchy in the Ukulele. I'm KD and this is the start of a series of reviews where we're reviewing instruments and ukulele accessories that we've bought and paid for ourselves. Uh, so we've paid our, our hard-earned cash on these instruments and we're going to give really open and honest reviews and they're not all going to be great. Um, I've certainly bought some things recently that I'm not that happy with and um, the reviews are going to be critical of, of bits that we don't like but applaud the uh, the things that warrant it but we're not we're not going to hold back we're, we're going to give it you as we see it um, we don't we're not trying to sell you any ukuleles here we just we we can give a real sort of unbiased opinion um, hopefully without upsetting uh, anybody too much but um, you know if an instrument's not up to scratch then we want to tell you about it to save you from uh, making that mistake yourself so the first review that we're going to do is for my Martin T1 Streetmaster. And the Streetmaster in the title um, is it's what Martin are using to call their sort of road worn series. Um, so if, if you uh, if you know Fender guitars, they do sort of road worn guitars, um, they do custom shot relics and things like that. And this is sort of Martin's recent take on, on that idea. So it's a brand new instrument, but it's made to look old. And um, they do that by it's, it's the, the finish on it. It's very, very thin like lacquer. It's been hand rubbed down in places, places where you expect sort of wear and tear on an instrument over a number of years. Uh, mostly, there's a, there's a few, there's one down here that I find a bit weird. I can't really work out how, how you're wearing that one down, really. Um, but mostly they're, they're in the places you'd expect. And it's a finish that's really going to split opinion, I think, because... I think, I think you either love them or you hate them. Um, I'm going to put my hand up now and say I actually love a road-worn fin road finish. Um, the thing, things that I like about it is that it's you're not afraid of it. It's a, it's a brand new instrument, but it looks lived in. So there's little edges that are rubbed down a little bit more than others. Um, I'm real heavy road worn or, or relic instruments you know you'll, you'll find dings and scratches and and notches taken out of it that's not the case with this one this really is just a case of the lacquer being sort of worn down but i'm kind of really looking forward o over over the years to this instrument weathering even more with my own marks and my own knocks and my own sort of things that, that inev inevitably happen and so that's what I like about it. I like that. But I also like with these instruments that it's not just about the look. They actually feel like they've been played in. There's something about on the neck slightly sort of rubbed down. It's, um, a, again, a satin finish, but it's it's almost like a matte finish. There's, um, you know, it's it's very, very smooth. And they, they feel played into me. And that's what I like about them. It's you pick an instrument up and it feels like it's, it's you haven't got to go through that period of, of playing it in. Um, I think the only exception to that is probably the tone of this instrument because the tone is a little bit bright. It's um, it's yeah, it's it's a little bit bright. But uh, I think it's an instrument that will weather in time, particularly because. So th let's go through a few specs. This is a this is a solid mahogany instrument, solid mahogany top, sides, and back. It has a sippo fingerboard, Murado bridge, um, but the neck. So Martin called the neck select hardwood, which is a bit vague and a bit nondescript. Um, I wouldn't let it put you off. Uh, what it basically means is it could be mahogany it could be spanish cedar there's a whole bunch of things really that, that it could be and the reasoning behind it is that it keeps the cost down um it allows them to keep their, their quality control up as well i think because what they're using is the the best that they can find at the time of manufacture so whatever they can find i'm sure the pricing comes into that as well so it's, it's going to be sort of the the, the price has to work for them but um, it just means that they're using what they what they can find at the time they're manufacturing a certain batch um, I it, it certainly doesn't worry me I mean this one to me looks like mahogany 
whether it is or not, I don't know. It could be an African hardwood. Um, but like I say, it wouldn't be of concern to me. It's a very nice feeling neck. Um, so it's also got a bone saddle, compensated saddle, and a bone nut. The nut is 34 millimetres. So it's quite small. Um, it, it seems to suit me quite well. And I, I kind of thought I'd, I'd like a wider nut, but it... I find playing it incredibly easy. 17 inch fingerboard, it's uh, 14 frets to the body, 20 frets overall. Um, has plastic inlays, tiny little dot inlays, which I actually, I quite like these. I like how understated this is as an instrument. And the same little dots in the, in the side there. Um, so the, the side dots and the inlays are, are just white plastic, but I, I think it looks really nice, really understated. Um, it's got Graftec ratio tuners. Now again, these have perhaps, I think, divided opinion a little bit because they're quite modern looking tuners. Now, I think people think that this is, it, it is a traditional looking instrument and it should have traditional looking tuners. And I can definitely see that argument. Um, I don't think they, they mark, they certainly don't market it to be a replica of a traditional instrument. It's, they market it to be worn as in, um, you know, it's kind of, I think the Street Master, it, it almost came from sort of um, wanting to be almost like a busker's instrument, something that had been sort of out there and played and strummed really hard. Um, and I think that's where the marketing is, is with it. So it's not marketed to be sort of a replica of a classic instrument. Um, I don't mind them at all. Um, I quite like them. I can see what people are saying. I think they're very, very good tuners. Um, this instrument tunes up really easily, really nicely. So I think they're very good tuners. Um, so from that point of view, I'm more than happy with them. Um, so I said I'd go through things that I didn't like. Well, there's there's one big thing on this instrument I didn't like because in, in general, I'm actually really, really happy with it. Um, but the big thing that has been an issue is that the threats aren't dressed very nicely. Um, in fact, they're really very sharp. I don't know if you can if you can hear it literally scratching the skin off my finger. Um, and my finger can get sort of stuck on them, it's so sharp. And sharp down the bottom end. Not quite as bad, there's just a few here. Um, but this, my, my concern with this, particularly for this review, is that I didn't buy this instrument from um, my usual um, retailer for ukuleles and my usual retailer uh, is a specialist ukulele retailer and they play every instrument that they send out they um, give it a setup you know it's fully checked every time before they send it out and I don't think they would have sent me this instrument as it was I think they would have sorted this out um, now, I didn't get it from a big box retailer. I, did, I didn't get it from the usual retailer because they didn't have it in stock and it wasn't an instrument that I think they were going to stock. Um, and at the time that I bought it and I was looking around, there was only this one in the country that I could find. Now, it wasn't from a big box retailer or an internet retailer. It, it was from a, a small little music shop. Um, I wouldn't say specialist ukulele shop, but they, they certainly sell a lot of ukuleles, banjos and folk instruments and so I was a little bit disappointed when this came out to me because some of these frets I think they've just lifted and I think because they're not so they haven't got a big internet presence and I think this is perhaps sat on the shelf so you know it's all sat sorry on the hanger for um, some time maybe and you know different humidities and things like that I think these frets have just lifted a little bit um, so I was just a bit disappointed that it was sent out like that. So it's hard for me to criticise Martin for this um, because I'm not convinced that it would have come out of the factory like this. Um, because the other threats are, are, there's a couple of sharp ones here and there. But then, you know, the rest of the finishing on the, on the instrument is perfect. It's very smooth. It's, you know, I can't fault it. I can't fault, you know, there's no sharp bits on the nut on the saddle. Bridge few little, maybe you could say they're sharp. Um, but in general, I think it's finished really, really nicely. So I'm surprised, I would be surprised if that came out of the Martin factory in that condition. Um, but even if it did, I know that if, if I'd gone to sort of a specialist ukulele retailer in the UK, 
that they would have sorted that before they sent it out. So I think, you know, a slight lesson there learnt um, in that the specialist guys really do know what they're doing and they put the instruments in your hands in perfect condition. Um, so a big thumbs up for them. Not quite so happy with where I got this one from. Okay, so the price of this instrument, it's around about, looking around today, it's anywhere between sort of 450 and 510, 520, depending on where you get it from. And there are a few available now, so there are, uh, there's a few more available. It's not massively available, um, and for some reason, the specialist ukulele retailers that I would like to buy it from aren't stocking it. Um, I'm sure there must be reasons for that. It may be that it's, it's Martin, and Martin have kind of dropped out of um, sort of ukulele or new ukuleles in, in recent years. You know, they're, they're classic ukuleles and they're, they're older ukuleles. We, we played a 1940s Martin last week, which was fabulous. Um, they're still much sought after, but they're not sort of renowned now as a ukulele manufacturer in today's market. And um, that may be why I, I, I don't know. But there are a few of these available. Um, I think it's a great instrument. And I think the thing that I love about it the most, or the thing that is, is the sound of it, um, yes, it's a little bit bright, but as I said, it's an all mahogany instrument. So I think that's going to age really well and it will get darker as it ages, I think. I could change the strings to make it darker. I quite like the brightness um, because I quite u like using it for picking melodies when there's other instruments sort of happening as well and it really cuts through. Um, but you can, you can sort of get a mellow sound from it depending how you play it. But it's certainly got this brightness to it as well. That if you like. One of the things that I really like about this instrument is um, it, it, it's the way it rings when you play melodies on this A string. Um, it just, if I... I don't know if you can hear that on our microphones, but it was ringing for all that time. And um, I really like that. I really like the, 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 the tone of it for me is, is perfect for what I wanted from this instrument. Um, this one's strung high G. Um, I don't think I'm gonna restring it. I like it as it is, so I'm, I'm gonna leave that like that. And um, the strings, I'm, I'm presuming that they're Martin strings because it's a Martin instrument and they make ukulele strings. Um, so I can't see them being anything else. And I said it's around about 450 to 500, 520 pounds at the minute. Um, it was manufactured in Mexico, so in the Martin factory in Mexico. They make, um, they don't make too many of Martin's guitars, a couple of models I think they make, um, possibly the Dreadnought Junior, I think they make. Um, but they, they make accessories and they make all the Martin strings and that's where all of the Martin ukuleles are made as far as I know. That, that's what I've been led to believe. Um, so this is made in Mexico, around about 450 pound mark. What's my favorite thing about it? It has to be that almost reverb like tone that, that comes out of it. Um, it's very, very playable and um, the action that's that's on here that I'm presuming is has come out of the factory is really really nice for me. It's low but not so low that there's any buzzing or anything like that at all. Um, and you know I can get the tones that I want out of it. So I'm really really happy with that. Um, I think so. Yeah, favorite thing is definitely that sound. Worst thing has to be has to be the threats. I can't kind of get around that. Um, if they'd come from a specialist and they've done the threat dressing for me um, which I, I it's not the end of the world I can sort that out um, I could I could do it myself but I think I'm probably gonna get our Luthier James to have a look at that for me um, what's the what's the thing that I don't like about it as much as I love the road worn in places it's maybe a little bit overdone I mean particularly in the lights here and the lights on the camera it seems a little bit overdone and I, I guess I it would be nice if that wasn't quite so rubbed away and then the marks that I'm gonna make on it, it would just add to it and enhance what was already there um, 
but I'm I'm really being overcritical with that because I do you know I, you know I think it's a lovely instrument. I think it plays really nicely. It sounds great. Um, setup was good. Problem with the threats, but as I say, we can sort that out. Um, great tuners. It's 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 for me. It was exactly what I wanted at the time that I bought it. Um, I like the ukuleles with the, the full gloss finishes and the ornamentation. You know, this is very basic. You've got an overlay, um, sort of a triple stripe ring there. You've got the Martin overlaid on the on the headstock. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's no beading. When it's rubbed away, it kind of looks like there's almost like an orange beading around it, which I quite like. Um, but there's no beading to it. You know, it is it is very sort of basic. It's put together, but I think you know the money has been spent on the wood, on the the way it's manufactured. It's very very tidy inside, very very you know sort of well put together by the looks of it, which is what you'd expect from a Martin. Um, and I think that's why you pay the money for the Martin. And it's got a tone that I like. It might not be to everyone's taste, but for me, I, I really like it. I think it's great. Um, so that is the Martin T1 Streetmaster. Um, first review of this kind, let, let us know what you think, um, what you'd like us to review and things like that. So we're, we're always going to be looking out to do, do more of these for you and Paul's going to do some for you. Uh, if you like what we do, then uh, like, subscribe and ring that bell. I'm here on my own. It is, what time is it? 20 past nine at night and everyone else has gone home and I've got no one to ring the bell. So that's all good. Um, but let's, uh, we'll, we'll put one on. So like, subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, we'll see you next time.